What's going on? Coach Aubrey here and welcome to part three of my competition series. So if you haven't caught the first two, um, I did two videos before this. The first one was about competition, how to know if you should compete or not, and what to expect when you do decide to compete. So check that out if you haven't already. Second one, I went over physique and figure mandatory poses. Um, the only thing I didn't go over is the mandatory poses that are required for women's physique that are not required for figure. So if you're watching this, this is all about women's physique division. So if you're another division, go to my other videos because this is just going to apply to women's physique. These are gonna be those fun mandatory poses that they don't include in figure. I personally love these poses because it allows you to show off so much more of your physique and it also allows you to move your bodies in the way that gives it the most flattering, competitive edge, so to speak. So let's just dive in. Um, again, go to the first video. You definitely want to watch the one I did on mandatory front and side poses before you dive into these because I use a lot of those same techniques in these poses. And so let's just start with a front double bicep. There's so many ways to do these too, which is cool. So you could do a front double bicep here, or what I used to do, I used to actually do the crossover. So let's just break down both of those. And so in both of them, you wanna create an X shape. In all of your poses, you wanna make your waistline look as small as you can and make your torso, like your shoulders and your lats as big as you can and your legs as thick as they can. So whatever you do, think about that. You wanna create that X. So if you choose to do your front double bicep like this, you can also just do it straight on. Some people do it like that. So play with it, get, you know, do what looks best for your physique, but you want to use the same rules that we did in the other video. So you want to think about screwing the balls of your feet into the floor to really kick those quads out. So I'm not just flexing my quads like this. I'm taking my feet and I'm screwing them into the floor to give them that extra contraction to really kick them out and look in a mirror for a while when you practice these and then ditch the mirror because you wanna to get to the point where you know for your body where your footing should be. Because this is all about you. Like if you have massive legs, you probably don't need to come this wide for your front double bicep. You might be able to do just a standard front double bicep here and look extremely powerful. So get to know your body and if you want a one-on-one -on -one session where I look at your physique and I tell you exactly how to shift and move to get the best pose for you, send me a message um, best through Instagram or Facebook. So that way we can schedule a time and we can do a one-on-one. -on -one. Would love to do that. And I also help people with their posing routines. So if you need help designing a routine, I gotcha. All right, so that's your first one. You wanna think about screwing your feet, keeping that waist tight, so I shift my hips back a little bit just to tighten it up a little bit. And then start by just flexing your biceps. I think everyone as a child even knows how to do a bicep flex. That's what everyone does, right? And so you can start with your fist closed just to practice. And then once you're in it, open your hands. That's all. And a couple important notes. Just like we did in that last video, you want to make sure your lats are out on your front double bicep. You don't want to be hiding them, showing your biceps. You want them to be out. So if you have a hard time flexing your biceps while your lats are out, I suggest go ahead and just get in your front pose, hold that feeling, hold your lats there, and get to where you can gradually bring your arms up for a bicep. And it takes time, you guys. Like If you're just now getting started posing, it's going to take time and hours putting into this to really get comfortable with it. And it's so fun because you will know the minute you made touchdown to say your lats, it's such a good feeling because for a long time, you don't know how to flex your lats. Like you're looking at them, you're in the mirror, you're trying, but they're just not flexing because that mind muscle connection isn't quite there. So that's the other thing I went over in my last video is at the end of it, I talked about how to activate your lats and then get to where you can flex them on command. So you'll definitely need that trick for these poses. So here you are, you've got your legs, your waist is tight, you flex your lats, 
and then you show those peaks off. Beautiful. And hand position, you'll also have to look in a mirror for a while and play with for your body. So if some people have their hands up here, it looks beautiful. Other people have them almost close to their biceps and it looks great. So just play with it. But a really good trick, no matter how you choose to do it, is from the side, make sure you're not doing this. That's really easy to do because you're sitting there trying to focus on your back. It can kind of bring your elbows back and you lose your peak. Get those elbows out in front. So you want to go from here to here with your elbows. It's going to show your peak a lot more, especially when it comes to your back double bicep. So many people hide their biceps because their elbows are back here. They just need to bring them forward. So if you choose to do the crossover for your front double bicep, super easy adjustment. You know how to flex your quads at this point. So all you're going to do, start from the front, turn slightly to where you're about maybe 10 o'clock from the judges. And then you're gonna keep that core nice and tight. And I'll tell you, the reason why I do this was to give the illusion that I was bigger because I'm not a really huge women's physique division competitor. So I needed to look bigger. And if I was beside those girls going like this, it kind of points out how small I am compared to them. So what I did is I did this to hide my waist, made my waist really small, and then got my upper body big. So it just made me look bigger up top and bigger in the legs compared to my midsection. So if you choose to do this, like I said, you're just going to turn to about 10 o'clock. You're going to take one leg, you're going to cross it over, and I bend my back leg slightly so you can play with it. Some women keep it straight. I like to bend it just for a little more control. And I'm kind of tall, so it kind of gets me on the same level with everyone. So you're down here. You want to take the quad you're flexing, and you want your toe to be on the ground, but you just want to twist your knee towards the judges. Because when you do that, they're going to be able to see the conditioning in your quads. So right there, blow all the air out of your gut. <sighs> twist, flex those lats, and get the, get the guns out right here. Same thing up top. So if you need to, you can go ahead and get into your front double bicep here <sighs> and twist. I wouldn't do that on stage because it doesn't look as pretty, but just while you're learning, you know, it's a good way to get you into it. And then while we're here, let's just go on into our side tricep and our side chest. So women's physique division, you cannot do this. You can't do this for your side chest. And if you're going to do this for your side tricep, have that leg out. That's what they want to see. And so on this, it's the same setup on the lower half. Got my quad out, got my tummy flat, except instead of doing this, we're now doing a side tricep. <sighs> Lots of things here. So really tight core. You want to take that shoulder and roll it back. A lot of people don't quite have that mobility, I'm noticing. So if you get to like right here, you can't go further, start doing a lot of chest openers. Really get your, your checks, your, your pecs more flexible, so that way they can open more. You want to be able to really open your chest because that's going to show off your delts. That's going to show off the shape back here. It's going to show off your tricep. And the farther you get it back, the more they can see your waist too. So they're going to see this tiny waist. They're going to see space between your waist and your arm. And it's just going to be a nice show. It really will. It'll be a beautiful physique. And so hand positioning is really helpful on this. There's different ways to do all of these. So you might decide to just go like this. Some women do that. Um, anytime you straighten your arm like that, it's a lot easier to flex your triceps. So you definitely want it to be straight. Some people will press down in their opposite hand like this. You can do that if that helps. Um, some people lock their fingers. So they'll lock them like this. And then they'll roll them back and get into position. You can do it like that. Um, so just choose what's most comfortable for you. Play around with it. But the most important thing is that you're making your waist look small and you're making your shoulder and tricep look big. So roll it back and really make sure the judges can see it. Um, now, the other thing is you don't have to do it that way. Some people choose to do it from the front and they'll kind of tilt. Like you see Sarah and Miss Olympia do it that way. I believe she flexes her quads, just like we talked about, leans to the side, kind of pops a hip to the side, and then uses the same trick, whatever you want to do with your hands, 
still flexing and you do this. You kind of lean it towards the judges. Make sure you're flexing everything else. And you might see them kind of twist it like this. So you're welcome to do it like that. The only thing is you have to be really conscientious of how far you're um, hinging your hip, I'll say, to be able to get that shoulder and that tricep out for the judges. That's why I just really think this one's easier. But it's up to you. So same thing. Let's start from here and go straight into the chest pose, side chest. I love this pose. So you're gonna keep everything the same. I don't even have to go over this part. You know your waist is tiny. You know you need to be flexing down here. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go from here to being out here. They wanna see your chest, they wanna see your pecs. So a couple things. I'm laughing because I've seen some interesting variations to this pose. We're not men, so they don't want to see us do this, and we're not in bodybuilding, open bodybuilding for women. So they don't want that. We got to make it pretty. So what I do is I have my hands out here, and for lack of not knowing a better way to explain this, <laughs> it works like a charm every time. Think about, you know, when you're thinking about where your hand position should be, I think about it being in line with my nipples. I'll just be honest. Because if you go below the nipple and you're here, it looks like you're just trying to show your boobs. If you go over the nipple and you're here, you're hiding too much of your pecs. So right there in the middle, right where the nipple is, that's where you want them. Okay? And so you got your lower body down, then you're going to turn, you're going to hinge down towards the judges so they can see you. Because if you're here, they're not going to see your chest. You got to hinge. And you can bend your knees. You can get down a little lower. Now, hand position, this is what I do. This is what I tell all my athletes to do. The side that's dominant to the judges, this one, the one that clo is closest to the judges, I hold my hand out, I take the opposing hand, and I press it into my wrist like this. When I do that, I'm activating my pecs. So it just gives them a little extra oomph, if you will. It gives them a little extra edge. So that's your side chest. And I might have forgotten to note, to note this, but you want to get comfortable doing these poses on both sides. They might actually specify which side to do when you're on stage, especially if you're being compared to somebody and they're trying to figure out who the winner is. They'll, they'll move you all around. They'll make you do all kinds of stuff. And then there's also a chance to do a pose down when you're in women's physique division. And so um, you just want to be able to show more variety. Like you don't want to just be one-sided. You, you want to show them that you can basically look good from all angles so um and then excuse me lots of talking today all right then let's shift into abdominal thigh i said abdominal thigh the abdominal thigh man wow let's just say abs and thigh that was a real tongue twister for me okay so again, a lot of variations to this. So you might see some women that come here, they do this. You might see some that do this. You might see some that do this. There's so many variations to this. So I'm gonna explain what you wanna think about for your physique while you do this. To keep it simple, you wanna create the best X shape you can when you show off your abs and figure it out from there, truly. So what I do, is I do a quads, one arm up, crunch. I like this because I find it to be more feminine. I've never been a huge fan of standing in front of the judges and doing this. I'm not saying it doesn't work. Like I see plenty of women that do it. I just don't personally think it looks that great. I think it looks masculine. I think to stand there in front of the judges right there, I just think that looks masculine. So. I like to do it off to the side and you can do it either side that looks good. Some people do more of like a side crunch. So just play with it and I'll just tell you a few tricks to use. Screw your feet into the floor regardless where, you know, you choose to have your feet. Pop those quads out. And then upper body, you want your lats to be out no matter what position you're in. You know, if you're here, you want your lats out. If you're here, you want your lats out. Always want your lats out. And then I take my hands and I press them into the back of my head. 
that helps activate all these muscles through here. So when you're really shredded and conditioned, all those muscles will be coming through if you can push your fist into the back of your head. Or if you're just doing one, push one in the back of your head. And then I want you to keep in mind, this pose is not gonna look good until you're show ready. Like people hate practicing this pose because they don't have abs in the off season. I mean, I don't, I have, you can kind of see the outline of mine, but it's not like I've got a six pack right now that I can flex and show. And so, yeah, I do stay leaner than most people in their off season, but still like this is nothing compared to show prep. So um, know that you still need to get really comfortable with it. So just get used to setting up for it. And then peak week, show day, you're gonna love how it looks. You're gonna love it. So just know that, don't be discouraged that these poses aren't gonna look great until you get really good at them and until you have the body to go with them. So practice anyway. Um, you do not have to flex your abs really hard on this pose. When you're that conditioned, you hardly have to flex at all. All you need to do is tense them. Um, if you start going, it shows. <laughs> it really does show. Um, you don't look comfortable. Start turning a little red. So you don't have to do that. They'll be there. Just tense it up a little bit. So hopefully that helps on the ab thigh. Just make sure you're flexing your thighs, of course. And then we went over the back pose on my last video. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. And the only difference is a back double bicep. That's going to be additional and that's not in figure. So let's go over that. A um, couple ways to do it. Some women, they'll keep their feet like pretty close together and just go into a back pose. I would suggest not doing that um, because if you put one foot back, it actually allows you to come back further and it gives you more support so you can keep your hips high and come back really far. And so let's just, let's play with this for a minute. When you do your back pose, especially if you're practicing by yourself, you're gonna have to record yourself, take some mental notes, record yourself, take mental notes, because you're not gonna know where that foot needs to be for your body until you play with it. So for me, it took me like two days of just going through my back double bicep to figure out like where my footing should be. So I'll show you now, it's about here. And as you can see, I'm, screw I'm screwing my, my quads out. God, I can't talk. I'm screwing my quads out like this. From the front, it's like this. I'm still thinking about screwing my feet into the ground. I've got my hips high, just like I would on my back pose, especially in women's physique. They want to see that glute hamstring tie in. So make sure you show that off. And then same trick that you use on your front pose. So front double bicep, it's the exact same thing. You're just going to lean back more. And it's the same rules that I went over in the last video. So when you lean back, make sure those hips are high. You don't want them here. You want them here. Then you want to lean back as far as you can without compromising your hips. And remember, don't let your arms do this. Keep your elbows out in front. That's going to create a better peak. I'll show you the difference. When I don't have my elbows in front, this is how it looks. Look at my biceps and then watch this. So pretty big difference, definitely a big difference. Um, and the more condition, the more you're gonna notice these differences too. So we went over the back pose, we went over side chest, side tricep, ab thigh, front double bicep, and y'all, I think that is everything. Thinking, I think that's everything. We went, on, we went over model pose on the last one as well. I want to end this video by talking about a little bit of stage manners, so to speak. A lot of people don't know these things. So when you go out on stage, and especially if this is your first show, don't freak out because you're going to have people telling you where to be. You're going to have people, when you're in line, lining up, they're going to be calling your number. They're going to be telling you exactly where to stand on stage. You don't have to figure that stuff out. And they usually have markers on the stage. So when you're out there, depending on how big your class is, um, 
you should have room to do your poses unless you're in like a huge show. Um, it, and even then women's physique division usually doesn't have quite as many women as some of the other divisions. You should have room to do your poses. So if you find that you're like elbow to elbow with someone, this is just me. I would inch forward slightly and do this. And if you're covering them, this is just my opinion, then the, the judges and the people doing the show, they need to figure out how to give y'all more space. I don't want you all to get up there and be stuck between two people and feel like you're just screwed and you can't show off your work. So if that happens, I would honestly refuse to pose. Like I would, I would look for the person that's helping everyone line up and I would like kind of say, what, where can I go? I can't get into my pose. Don't feel embarrassed about doing that. I know that's terrifying to think of, but if you can't get into your poses, it's not right. So I just, I've seen it happen before. So I just wanted to say that. And anytime they switch you, so they'll have you in your mandatories and they might say number four and number eight switch. What you want to do is you want to raise your hand if they call your number and the other person should do that too. And you look around and whoever has also raised their hand, you walk in front of the other girls and you switch with that person. That's something that's changed with me. I used to tell people to walk behind the girls because I thought you want to be polite, you know, but I had a few coaches correct me on that and say, who cares? Don't worry about them. Like the judges are going to be able to see them, but that's giving you more time to get in front of the judges. So if your number gets called and you switch, take your time and be intentional with every move. It's always a show, so don't drop your guard. I've seen women sometimes get out of their pose and just walk normal, and they looked great until they got out of their pose and walked, and it's like they let their, their butt sag, and they just kind of let it go, and that, it wouldn't surprise me if that knocks them down a placing, because um, that shows the judges your flaws, so you don't want to do that. You always want to be on, so walk in front, and then just get right back in position. And the other thing is when you're doing your transitions, I know we didn't go over those in this video. I'll do those at some point. Um, take your time. When we're on stage, we tend to rush or we feel like we're moving really slow, but we actually move too fast usually. So if you're in your front pose and they say quarter turn, which is what they're going to say to cue you to move, then don't do this. You've probably seen people do that at local shows. It's because they're super nervous. It takes away from your stage presence. And it, it, when you look really nervous on stage and you look really uncomfortable, it takes away from, from your presence. And so I'm not saying judges will knock down points, but you're not giving them the best impression of your confidence. So instead, just take it slow, quarter turn. Give them time to look at you. right there. All right. If you found this video helpful, please like, and subscribe. Let me know if you want to hear more stuff. Um, let me know what you think about these. And like I said, if you want extra help or you want more content like this, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook and we can connect, but have a fabulous show. I'm rooting for you. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.